second. Nice, everybody. So let's go back to the Allegro con brio, the beginning of the Allegro con brio. I like the dynamic a lot in the first violins. Ba, bum, ba, da, bum, ba, da. I think that our downbeats could match the quality of the melody a little bit more. So they're, they're doing this kind of sotto voce. Ba, bum, ba, da, bum, ba, da. And we're sort of doing down, down, you know. So make it a little more circular with a little more left hand and a little more in each note, huh? Let's hear that again from the Allegro. With the pickup, huh? So here to go. Seven and two. Now, is that one louder than the first one? No, right? It just feels louder. So we, we want to be careful not to be too aggressive. Okay, once again. It's just a little spiky to me. Gang, gang, gang. Hua, hua, hua. Okay? <laughs> yes, that's the right idea. Crescendo. Piano. Yeah. You see how beautifully that works with the subito piano and the winds? Now, can I just hear the winds? Let's, let's really define the subito piano. Right where you come in, woodwinds. One, two. Uh -huh. You had it right, bassoons. <laughs> Ready? One, two. It's not quite subito piano enough, and we stop the crescendo a little bit too soon. So it's really difficult to do it. Commit to the crescendo as if it's going to go on forever, and then... That's pretty good. It's not in tune, but that's, that's the right idea. Okay, see if we can get a little more in tune. One, two. I like that. And then that's going to fit beautifully with. Yeah. Same thing, presto, or allegro con brio. One, two. Yeah. Now this one's different. Go all the way through. And now here, thank you. Now here, be, be, be careful not to rush in the loud one. So everything was perfect rhythmically until here. It's the repeated Ds. Just be careful in the forte. Okay, one last time, Lyric Con Brio. On this beginning because then it's all the same, right? Is that the first fortissimo that we just got to? Yes. yes, it's the first fortissimo of the first minute and a half of music. So, uh, I thought we had a really nice crescendo, but then when we get to the fortissimo, commit to it. Yum, pum, 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 pa. Can we go two bars before the fortissimo, which is bar 29? Ready? One. Two. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now here, violins, there's no sforzato on the C one, so sing out. Yum, pum, 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 ta, da, dee. Finally a melody. Not a melodic fragment, but finally a melody. And who's in charge, of course? It's the violas and cellos. Dangerous. <laughs> Everybody lock into that. Okay. Let's see if we can do all of that from the beginning of this Allegro and we'll play on for a while. Allegro con brio. One, two. Nice. Takes a lot of control. Ah. Bum, bum, bum.
fortissimo. Also, if we're making a crescendo, we're going to need a little more time anyway. So allow the bow distribution to slow you down. If it takes a little bit longer at the top of the scale to make all of those notes as loud as you want them, let it happen. Winds just have to be careful on papi papa. Okay, so winds like in bar 74, papi papa papa papa. Make sure that the third beat comes at the right time. Papa 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 papa. Okay, let's do a few things here. Letter A. I love this thing with the second violins and the first violins. I think it's almost nicer than the melody. Boom, 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 beam, boom, 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 boom. Can I hear first and second letter A? One, two. Second violins, do you feel like your quarter notes are really even rhythmically? <laughs> They're like, well, since I'm asking that question, they must not be, right? <laughs> I feel like the third to the fourth one goes a little faster than the first to the second one. Bum 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 bum. Little accent on that second second beat. Yum bum 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 bum. Just the seconds in the second bar of A. One, two. That's a lot better. I think it could be just a touch shorter as well. A little less brushy. One, two. Good. Now, in the rest, imagine you're playing the first violin part. Yum, bum, 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 bim, bum, 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 bim, bum, bum, bum. Okay, let's try it together. First and second, letter A. One, and. Good. That's quite conversational sounding now. So just remember those things we adjusted. A little bit shorter and a little accent on the second beat. Now, can I hear the woodwinds, please, at letter A? <coughs> Woodwinds, letter A. One, and. Okay, a couple things here. Be, sh be careful that the last note in the bassoons is not sharp. Um, but also, bassoons have a sfort forte piano or sforzando. On the second beat, it's different from everybody else. So really hit it when you come in. T O U T O U E. Now, flutes and oboes. Re, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Bum, pa, pa, da, da, dum. The eighth notes feel a little compressed to me. Dum, ti, ya, da, da, dum. Dum, ti, ya, da, da, dum. Ta, da, da, dum. Sing through them, huh? Okay, same thing. Letter A. Woodwinds. have dots over your notes in bar 62? No. Could you put them in, please? Should be the same articulation as the bassoon. Bum, 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 bum. Then it was lovely. You played exactly what you had. Uh, Ethan, in order for that to really work, you have to leave the G a little sooner. Okay, same thing. Woodwinds, letter A. I know we're... Uh, Dealing with masks. One and. Okay, that was too far the other direction. Give me, give me right in the middle of those two. It'll be perfect. One, two. Steady, steady. <laughs> okay, it's not so steady. And where does it become not so steady? As soon as we start moving. I think it's after the dotted quarter. And the reason is you have a dotted quarter plus an eighth and then four more eighths. And they sound like five eighths right now. So the dotted quarter and the eighth note, and then the next beat needs a little anchor. Ba 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 ba. Not da ba da ba da da. Okay, let's go from the forte half notes. You know the place. One and. Now 
nose much better. I'd make the nose just a touch shorter in the bassoon. One more time. One, two. Yeah. Now, do you feel like you made a difference when you got to the fortissimo from the forte? No. So let's do that, huh? Yeah, pum, 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 pum. It's difficult. Once again, one, two. That's pretty good. Let's agree on the note length at the end. Yum, pum, 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 pa. Okay? Good. Strings just have to fit into that. It's, it's, it's actually easier for the strings not to rush because you're going, it should help meter you, right? Letter A, please, Tutti. Before B, one, two, three, four, five bars, just the strings. Let's do six. Six before B, just the strings. Ready? <sighs> yeah, that was already better because we were just being more aware of it. It's really, it has to be uh, in the violas and cellos. Ba, 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 Pick up to three bars before B. Okay, everybody, last time, letter A. Letter A, everybody. So that's all the right ideas. Now it's just because we've been working, the tempo's gotten a little bit slow. And also I think it's just slightly overly polite. <laughs> you know, when it's fortissimo and Beethoven, it should be a little bit, you know, on the gross side of things. Angsty, super, I mean, maybe the most angsty composer ever. <laughs> maybe. He had only three <laughs> decent um, adult relationships in his life, just with like family even, you know, and he ruined them all. So like, couldn't get along with anyone, tortured, you know, about writing music, terrible love life. He had like boils on his skin. It, it was just like, it was a, he had a rough go, Beethoven. So when you play like, ba, 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 da, ba, ba, da, and it, you know, imagine this little short guy, yum, bum, Bing, bum, bum, bum. Okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, what I'd like to do now is play all of, or at least most of, the Allegro section. So, let's go back to the Allegro. Why don't we take the second ending when we come through? Allegro, take the second ending. Let's see if we can bring, keep all the style points that we worked on, and now bring a little fire. One, two, three. 
Softer. Softer at the start of the crescendo. Now we go. And one. shopping C minor. Forte piano, give me a little push. No forte piano this time. Crescendo wins. Bum,
finally didn't play the last note longer than the other ones. That was good. Okay. Nice, everybody. <laughs> You're all right, woodwinds. So it would be lovely to hear what the trumpets sound like, but they'll be here someday. Okay. Someday, somewhere. <laughs> now, okay, a couple things. So after the second ending, I thought the first half went really well. After the second ending, you were getting what I was saying as I was shouting things out, but it, sometimes everybody can't hear, so it's good to clarify. All of these forte pianos should be a shock, like a, like a shock of lightning. You know, like, like white has just gone across the screen. You know, like old, old silent movie music or something. Okay, so we were getting it, but just to, just to keep that in mind, I can only say again the same thing that if you play exactly what's written, most things work out okay. Sometimes it's piano to forte with the word crescendo in the middle. Sometimes there's no crescendo written, and I think they're supposed to be different. Sometimes we go bum 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 with a forte piano, and other times it's pianissimo. So really making those changes make a big difference in how this comes across. And the most important thing I think of all is that one forte has to be different from two fortes. And in general, we're not playing overly loud, which is great. So when we have two fortes, we can really let it go. Horns, the, the place where you should play the loudest in the whole movement is, do you have measure numbers or just letters? Both? Measure 160. Like big pillars of sound there. Um, after letter C, fine. Then when it starts trading off, it got a little rhythmically unstable. For me, the sixteenths were slightly too compressed. So when you're not playing, think. One and two and one and two, da -da 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 -dum. or even better, or so that you're really thinking about your rhythm before you play it. Not, I'm resting. Oh, that was nice, cellos. Okay, so let's go through this section. Uh, letter C would be fine. Letter C would be fine. With the pickup, one. Yes, 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 now, thank you. That's much better. Strings, do you have crescendo written in your music? Okay, so each, don't try to make a crescendo in the individual places. Think of it like a Haydn style crescendo, so it's stepped. So each time you come in again, be a little louder than the previous time. And then we have this kind of staircase crescendo that happens. Now, one last comment. At letter C, at least in my score, the downbeat is fortissimo. And then the next bar is sforzando, right? So the fortissimo needs more sustain than the sforzando. Make that a nice meaty moment, huh? Okay, pick up to letter C. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 179 is supposed to have a sword song. Here's pick up to C. One, two. <laughs> dynamic of the pickup notes it's not clear is it yeah it's not really clear because we're still fortissimo but the winds have a piano I think I think come in at the dynamic that you hear the winds and then crescendo to the downbeat so it's probably like mezzo forte ish and then going across to the downbeat I think there's a missing dynamic there see Yeah, that's really effective. Now, in piano. Mezzo 
piano. Mezzo forte. Forte. Fortissimo. Go! Yes, okay, thank you. So I think that has some real shape to it now. The last thing I want to do in the first movement is a little bit of the beginning. And then we'll go on. What's the most important thing at the beginning? Oh, the first movement. Tuning, intonation, absolutely. It takes so much discipline from the winds. It's really difficult. Can I hear just the winds and horns begin? That's 50 times better than it was the first time. Just because of me saying it's really difficult. <laughs> you know, so just that little bit of mental energy or a big bit of mental energy makes a big difference. Um, now, I would love it if possible for the resolution, the, the F major resolution, to be a little more dolce compared to the downbeat. So, tia. You know, as if we were playing a string instrument and we just went, oh, oh there's another note, oh, you know, instead of this, right? Let's try it again. Horns have an easy job. They don't change notes. Can, is it possible to get softer? I think the flutes are doing a pretty good job. <laughs> but I think the mid voices could get softer, and especially the clarinets. That's kind of your territory, right? No, just let, let me just hear the clarinets only. Show us the, that amazing thing that only the clarinet can do. That's it. I see they just fade into nothing, right? <laughs> no, none of the rest of the wind instruments can do that nearly as easily. So, but I think that actually as we'll hear the bottom of the chord and the top of the chord and the horns and the flutes pretty clearly. And if those middle voices make some more space, it will sound like more of a diminuendo. It's way better. That sounds very, very good. Now I have to do it another time. Next part. Okay. What is that chord that we just played? The second, the, the last note we just played. A minor, right? A minor. So what does that mean for the C naturals? Up. Major chord goes down, minor chord goes up. 14, 17. Okay? So all you have to do wins is just think happy thoughts on the C natural. Little smile will bring the pitch up just fine. Okay, let's hear the second bar. Second bar. It's way better. Now, make sure you don't cut off too soon. I think the minor chord of all of these needs a little more espressivo. I like that a lot. Okay, let's do the beginning, everybody. That's very, very fine wind playing. It's not easy to do. Sounds a little guitar-ish there. Do you watch me or do you watch Kathleen there? Because what is it? Is it here, 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 or here? You can actually watch her go, <laughs> okay, once again. Listen to each other. 
Yeah, I think, I think, thank you. All of this is much nicer. Wins, when you make the crescendo, wins, when you make the crescendo, make sure you make a little more space. It's just pushing sharp into D major there, to the D major chord. String, could you play in bar four without me conducting? I think it will be better. Ready? Seven, eight. <laughs> way better than when 30 people all try to decide when is when. Instead, just use your ears and play inside the ensemble. And also, it gives us the right dynamic because we go, Wah! Oh, I'm scared. Da -da -da. But that's how it should sound. Huh? Okay, very last time I promise wins the beginning. It's a good work on this. <sighs> that's the best one yet. Fabulous. Really, really good work. That's such a difference from what it was 35 minutes ago. Okay, last movement. 